Managing AI responsibly is one of the key concerns that executives have today. What are the best practices? How can you get started? But the question also, how can you scale these practices effectively? And it's great to have Anindo Dutta. He wants to share his experiences and his insights. Welcome, Anindo. Thank you, Ronald. Yeah, let's dive in and start with giving some context. Can you explain what responsible AI means in the context now in 2024? We have learned a lot from the previous years. And could you share maybe some examples as well? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, Ronald, thanks for having me on the show here. Um, responsible AI has certainly become a very important aspect uh, for corporations, for businesses. Our view is that organizations should be creating a responsible AI framework that includes the governance aspects, includes operating model, risk management. It really has a, a kind of a trifecta of all of these elements. Uh, what we've seen specifically with clients that we work with, I'll give you an example of, of a global biopharmaceutical company. Uh, they've got leadership support to kind of drive this framework, but they didn't have the buy-in from the divisions in order to make it happen. So they called in EY, we brought in our multidisciplinary team, data scientists, risk management experts, privacy experts to really pull this important framework, which in my mind really has five key components. And they are defining a responsible AI framework to validate the components of the model, establishing an AI operating model that includes um, participation from various divisions, from various teams, employing specialized cybersecurity controls to meet these challenges that AI systems represent, preparing your data. Uh, AI, as we know, requires vast amounts of data, structured and unstructured, and you really need a mature data management program to put the wrappers around that. And last but not least, activating the enterprise, uh, activating across the enterprise, the functions that include defining roles, responsibilities, and establishing the process uh, that will then surround itself um, around the projects that include AI. Hope that helps. Yeah, it helps. And it's, it's a nice structured approach. What I see often is that many companies start a little bit less structured. And so if you look to your example, um, and maybe a little bit broader in, in the market, what kind of sentiment do you see among, amongst the executives about responsible AI? And has this changed with let's say when really the hype started with Gen AI in 2023, or is it still the same compared to a year ago? No, I think the sentiment has changed. I think a year plus ago, a lot of folks were experimenting with Gen AI. It was cool. A lot of POCs and pilots were happening. I think now we, uh, we've shifted a lot more to what is the business impact Gen AI can bring? What's the tangible value? How do I put the best practices to do um, ethical AI and the safeguards and guardrails uh, around my AI projects? So I think definitely the, the sentiment has changed um, and people are getting a lot more serious about the longer term implications of AI. So Anindo, you do a lot of research. What kind of statistics do you have around the concerns from C-level executives, from their teams? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. So while clients see the potential of AI and the benefits, there's also a lot of concerns around various elements around AI, right? So we uh, there's an EY survey that was done and it found 65% of all CEOs believe more work is needed to AI uh, to address AI's social, ethical, and, and, and other societal concerns, right? Uh, second, uh, there's certainly a lot of... Um, uh, misunderstandings or not as much clarity on the privacy around IP rights around AI. So all of that needs to get flushed out. There's still a lot of uh, kind of headwinds there. And then also among our teams, our employees, there's a lot of anxiety. Two thirds of employees are anxious about not knowing how to use AI ethically. You know, there's potential uh, job implications. You know, what does that mean for my job or, or for the future? And then also legal risks, there's legal cybersecurity. So there's a lot of risks and concerns that people still have in their minds. And these are fairly high percentages that we've seen in some of the surveys that we've done. However, this is not all gloom and doom. We work with uh, collaboratively clients all around the world. And we think at EY, there's a balanced approach to AI governance that promotes innovation while you can mitigate risks. And so it really kind of creates a healthy information ecosystem 
This way we can all help to shape kind of the future of AI in a, in a very balanced way. And you were talking about these best practices and also how to get this value out of AI. How can organizations manage responsible AI um, practice? So what's, what's your experience with your clients who manage this either on their own or do they like to collaborate with um, a number of ecosystem partners that have the experiences already? Yeah, I think we certainly see a lot more collaboration with um, professional services firms like us, consulting firms like EY, and also with our ecosystem partners, you know, working with ServiceNow, working with other tech firms. It's really an ecosystem where everyone's all in on AI, but then everyone also wants to make sure that all of the policies are in place, the safeguards, the guardrails are all there so that the ecosystem as a whole is being a lot more responsible around AI. Yeah, and that's exactly what I see a lot. Um, larger organizations, they have the challenge with responsible AI. They need to set up this framework. You have this great five steps, and I think that makes it a good guideline, but you can't do it alone. You need expertise from companies that either have it done before or tech partners that have done it before because it's it's quite a, a complex type of approach. Maybe some last tips you have for the audience, how to get started. Yeah, I think uh, clearly, you know, engaging professional help in this space is, is, is a good thing. Like I said, a lot of experimentation has been done. A lot of people have played around in pilots, but I think as you get serious, it's really important to make sure you're working with the experts, both in-house, as well as external in kind of putting the framework together that works for your for your organization. Thank you, Anindo. And I, I like your framework, your structured framework to get up and running with uh, responsible AI. And for the audience, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.